video we're going to review chapter one, which is your introduction to chemistry and the discussion and classification of matter. So chemistry is the study of matter and the changes it undergoes. So matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. So that's pretty much everything in your world, with the exception of like ideas and energy and stuff that isn't stuff. But all stuff is composed of a fundamental unit called atoms. So an, a singular atom is a collection of protons and neutrons in the center surrounded by a cloud of electrons. If you have a substance that is only one type of atom, it's pure, and you have what would be known as an element. So this way here would be an example of neon, solid neon, only one type of atom, you would call that an element. Now, this is a monatomic element, because you can see there are individual atoms. If you have a diatomic element, such as oxygen right here, each molecule contains two atoms. So those are what we call the Brinkelhoffs. So, but this is still a pure substance. Only one type of element, one, only one type of atom present, this would be an element. Water is another pure substance, but it's known as a compound because it has two different types of atoms bonded together. It can be physically separated, uh, it cannot be physically separated into two or more things. It would have to be chemically separated and new substances would have to form. So you couldn't have H2O anymore if you were going to separate this into more pure substances. Now, solid phase of matter, I just want to point out, is the lowest kinetic energy phase for a substance. So it's not moving all that fast. Molecules are stuck in fixed locations and they're just kind of vibrating in place. It's actually much easier to see it here. When you have a liquid, you have molecules that are sliding past each other and they don't have permanent neighbors. So they have more kinetic energy than the solid phase. They still experience intermolecular forces on a high level and um, they're not super compressible typically. But then gases are quite a bit different because they've completely spread out, they've overcome the attractions between the molecules, and they have the highest kinetic energy and they're moving the fastest for that given material. Pause. So we have talked about elements and compounds. So those are both pure substances, meaning you can't separate them uh, physically. In order to separate them further, they'd have to do a chemical separation. Mixtures, however, are collections of more than one pure substance. And those, so, those mixtures can either be homogeneous or heterogeneous. If they're homogeneous, they're evenly dispersed or considered uniform in nature. They don't typically exhibit the Tyndall effect, which means they don't scatter light when they're like a solution. Um, and then if they are not evenly dispersed or not uniform, then you'd have a heterogeneous mixture. And the two categories of heterogeneous mixtures are colloid and suspension. The difference between those is that the suspension will settle out over time. Like if you kick sand up in water, you can't do it through it initially, but eventually it's going to settle out. A colloid would be more like milk, where it kind of the particles stay, stay dispersed in the material, but they're not truly dissolved and they scatter light. Like you can't see through milk the same way you can see through Kool-Aid. Pause. Now we're going to look at the different types of elements that we have. So the first group or family, which we call the alkali metals, consists of lithium, sodium, potassium, etc. These all form positive one ions, and they're super reactive metals. The next group right here, the alkaline earth metals, are also very reactive, and these ones will typically form, or always form, positive two ions when in an ionic compound. These are the most reactive metals over here. In the middle, you have the transition metals, not quite as reactive, but very common, and we use them all the time. Transition metals, we'll learn later, is that they're filling up their d orbitals, or their d subshells, with their electrons as you're doing your electron configuration. These over here, underneath the staircase, are considered the poor metals. And right along the staircase, with the exception of aluminum, would be the metalloids. The only other really common groups that you need to know are the halogens, which are fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, and the noble gases, which don't react with anyone.